In today's video, I want to address the beginners who are wanting to learn how to wholesale real estate. And I want to level with you on kind of the dark side of wholesaling. And what I mean by that is some of the deals, situations, and relationships that I've had go sideways over the years in my investing career. As a beginner, when you're learning how to wholesale real estate, a lot of folks that are selling courses or even other investors, they'll share the wins, like the check picks, the look how much money I made. But you often don't hear about when they leave a seller in a worse position than they found them in. So a couple times when we've left somebody worse off than when they initially found us or what we had to do to make them whole, um, number one is gonna be when you're wholesaling a deal and one of your buyers on a walkthrough actually steals stuff. Now, we don't have proof. Uh, we don't necessarily know who did it on the situation I'm referencing here, but somebody stole about $500 worth of brand new paint. Yeah, I'm gonna get that paint. Seller called us and was like, hey, where'd my paint go? I hadn't seen any paint. So technically they could have been hustling us, but it was about $500 they were out and we had to cut them a check for 500 bucks to try to repair that relationship. The second one that comes to mind is when you're wholesaling a property and you don't have the cash to close, so you're relying on your buyer to do what they, well, are contractually obligated to do. I had a situation, a super, super sweet couple that had a farmhouse and we went to closing, they showed up and signed the docs, my buyer showed up and signed the docs and then never wired the money in. Now, typically when this happens, your buyer will kind of BS of, well, it, it missed the cutoff, it'll be there. It always happens on a Friday, right? The money will be there on Monday. So Monday rolls around, the money's still not there. So I have to call the seller, call the buyer, try to figure out what's going on with this deal. And my buyer said, hey, I just need a couple more days. Can we re-sign on Wednesday? So I call back up this sweet, uh, you know, farmer couple. And I'm like, hey guys, I'm super, super sorry. Um, there was a blah, 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 whatever line of BS my buyer had told me, which I now know was totally not accurate. And I get them to come back to the closing table a second time. So these folks show up on Wednesday, go back through all the motions, sign all the docs. My buyer shows up again and the money doesn't come in. So they're like, Ryan, you know, what the heck? Cause these are, you know, good, uh, good moral folks who wouldn't swear at me. And I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm just as frustrated as you are. Let me find out what's going on here. So I have uh, what we call a come to Jesus in the Midwest, which is like a, you're gonna do this or you're not gonna buy this house. And again, he tells me, hey, we're gonna get this deal closed. So a third time I go back to the sellers and I tell them, look, I know you're upset. I know you're frustrated. Um, I know there's some, you know, a relationship we've built here. I will personally bring a thousand dollars to closing to apologize for this mess. If you guys show up one more time, you think my buyer wired in the money? Nope. It's not a thousand dollars. And quite frankly, other than like the personal frustration of looking really, really dumb, they didn't sell the property that they wanted to sell. Another rough situation we ran into with a seller was they actually moved out of the house during our inspection period. Now, if you're wholesaling a house, this is typically when you have like your escape clauses to get out of the contract if you need to. This was actually a property we were planning on keeping as a rental. And we're very, very clear with the people that we go under contract with of like, hey, this isn't a done deal until we're out of this time frame. And the seller had actually moved out during our inspection window and our inspection window revealed serious foundation issues that we couldn't close. Make sure you explain during that inspection period that they are to do nothing. Uh, if you don't wanna replace paint that you don't know if it was really stolen or not, make sure you take pictures of absolutely everything. On the buyer being flaky, Get things like proof of funds, make them put down larger earnest money deposits. If it's normally a thousand bucks, go 2,500 or five grand if you're resetting up a closing for that person. 
The reason I'm sharing this stuff with you guys, it's not because it's fun, it's so you can kind of learn from some of my mistakes before you make them yourself. Wholesaling real estate as a beginner, there's gonna be times that a seller changes their mind. And this is really, really tricky, right? Like you've got marketing out, you've got time invested, probably a lot of follow-up, and the seller calls you and they're like, yeah, let's just cancel this contract, or, you know, hey, things have changed, we're not gonna sell, you know, something to that nature. And this is one of those things that you've gotta be aware of the fact that you're gonna run into it the way it doesn't catch you off guard. Now, how I typically handle this, if they're an owner-occupant, I'm never gonna force somebody out of their home. Uh, it's a great way, it's a great way to end up on the five o'clock news in your market, right? Local real estate investor kicks Nana out of her house. That being said, we do record what's called a notice of interest that clouds title on the property. So we'll let them know, hey, that's totally fine. I'm not gonna force you to sell. However, I am gonna leave our contract out there. That way, if that ever changes in the future, you've gotta come back to me. That prevents somebody from just telling you they don't wanna sell when they're really trying to sell it to somebody else behind your back for more money. Now, if they're an absentee owner, meaning they don't live in the house, I mean, we play hardball, right? You're an adult, you signed a legally binding agreement to sell a property that you don't personally occupy. You have to fulfill these terms. This, this isn't something that you can just cancel or just choose to get out of. Now, you could sue for like specific performance to force somebody to close, but good luck. It's probably not gonna be worth the time on something like a typical wholesale deal. The most painful lesson that if you're in wholesale real estate for any length of time that you're gonna learn is when you lose a deal to a competitor. Now, there's various reasons that this could happen, but I'm gonna give you two examples from my own career. The first one came at a time that I really, really, really needed a deal. So the seller called me on a Friday, left me the most beautiful voicemail you've ever seen. Basically, here's everything you wanna know as an investor, I don't want the house at all. My brother left it to me. Here's the shape of everything. If you can pay X, the house is yours. The guy's asking price was like, oh, heck yeah, we got, we got a deal here, right? Well, I wasn't taking my calls live back then. So this was a voicemail that came in. Came in on a Friday night, I was busy. Saturday I was with the wife, you know, uh, as an ethical Midwesterner, we don't work on Sundays, right? We're like Chick-fil-A. So we, we didn't call the guy back till Monday. On Monday, I call the guy and I say, hey man, yeah, I'd love to come out. You know, I've got my contract in hand ready to go. And the guy said, hey, Ryan, somebody else had the initiative to answer the phone when I called them and I actually sold them the house for $5,000 less. Oh, yeah, that hurt. On that one deal, I would have made north of 20 grand at a time that I really needed it. But me being lazy, cost me the deal. If you're a beginner researching about how to wholesale real estate, hopefully you found this helpful and insightful. As somebody with a platform, I honestly feel obligated to share the good with the bad. Don't get me wrong, uh, I don't like sharing the stuff that's not fun, but I think it's super helpful for you to have proper expectations of the fact that things aren't always gonna go according to plan. For instance, uh, this video, we're literally sitting in my garage. The air conditioning went out in my house today and it's actually colder outside than it is in. And as much as I wanted to just like drip sweat on film for 20 minutes, we decided to set up in the garage. My name is Ryan Dossie. Hopefully you found this video helpful, actionable, and applicable. Be sure to like and subscribe. As always, if it's helpful, share it with your friends. Talk to you guys next time.